Welcome back. It is time for your health check and it is my last day to be with you on Daybreak and my final health check. But before I go, an update on an incredible story of survival thanks to medical advancements, a staunch patient advocate and the will to live. I actually started practicing about four years ago. At age 40, Selwa Mitchell's body moves in ways that most of us will never feel. I do meditation through movement and your brain doesn't think about anything or your mind doesn't think about anything for um, a few minutes. For Selwa, this is freedom from cystic fibrosis. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at the age of three. It takes over your lungs, but not only that, your whole body. Doctors expected the genetic disease to deteriorate Selwa's body fast. She wasn't supposed to live past age seven. Here I am, 40. <laughs> Years Selwa's body has fought for. Even when she met the love of her life and married him, it meant fighting a lifetime of brushes with death. It was day by day, hour by hour, second by second. Um, you couldn't get too far ahead of yourself. You know, you had to really be in the moment. Every moment became extraordinary, like when Isabella was born, and four years later, the arrival of Mitchell. But there's a limit. You know, I let them know that their mom was very, very sick. To even the strongest person's strength. Headed to the hospital, feeling strong, my heart is at peace. The lungs Selwa was born with were dying. Here I am at 22% lung function. I can barely breathe, but I could get on my mat and um, I could find my handstand, my headstand. And I, you know, I just, knowing that my body could still do that, I knew I still had a chance. Selwa's only hope was a double lung transplant, a gift she would receive from an 18 year old donor in June of 2016. In a few short months, heartbreak. Selwa's body was rejecting the donor lungs. She was breathless and at times hopeless. I'd be laying on my deathbed thinking of all the last times. You know, that was my last time to take her to school. That was my last time, you know, to help them brush their teeth. So I was just in my mind um, living through all my last times. Her body was shutting down, but her spirit was on a different path. And I'm fighting to breathe, to talk, to live, and I had to get back onto the transplant list. That's not easy. A lot of doctors wouldn't perform a risky second double lung transplant. Selwa was just too sick. My kidney shut down. I had a heart attack. I had a stroke, liver failure, lung failure. Her husband, Scott, had an idea. I wanted to connect the doctors with a person and a family and a, a strong woman, not just a patient lying in a hospital bed. He wallpapered Selwa's hospital room with photos. As soon as I did that, the next time a doctor or a nurse walked in was the first thing that I went to. They saw the strength in her and how strong her body is and her light that just shines through her. I think it kind of rallied the troops. Doctors responded to that and so did Selwa. In the days ahead, her heart grew stronger. She got back on the transplant list. Less than a full year later, Selwa's third pair of lungs are allowing her to live life in a way that's simple and familiar to us, but something she's never experienced. Which is kind of nice to take that deep breath when I start thinking about it. Look how far you've come. No more wheelchairs or oxygen tanks. She can walk her dogs, yeah. drive her kids to school. Ah. And while she still has to take 50 pills every day, Selwa can practice yoga now with her full breath. I've had two lung transplants and I still have to be reminded, be thankful for my breath. Your body is capable of so much. Your body is so strong. Just take a deep breath and, and, and say thank you. We are all taking a deep <laughs> breath right now. Selwa is here with her husband and one of your two children. Yes. The other one's sleeping. Yes. Okay, that's Teens. what happens with teenagers, <laughs> right? Um, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel so good. Um, no setbacks and we are just blessed, breathing deep and feeling blessed. I do have to ask you about going through the pandemic because was that 
really scary for you? I feel like you're kind of one of those people that we kept warning other people about, like, you don't look sick, like there's nothing visibly wrong with you, but you probably had to be super careful. Well, if anything, though, it's not that different. I've always worn masks. I've mm. always been very careful. So when they were telling the guidelines of what you need to do, I'm like, wait, don't we all wash our hands? Don't we all? <laughs> so um, we, again, though, it was a little scary because just the idea of getting COVID, but um, I, we, we handled it well, right? Yeah, yeah. we're here. You're we're here. <laughs> and are you still taking the 50 pills a day or has that changed? Yeah, that is something I will always do um, to prevent my body from going into rejection because I want to keep these lungs. Yes, so, yes, yeah. they're working for you. Yeah. Um, Scott, something that you said in that interview will always stay with me. Ooh, this is probably going to be the hardest thing I say because I had to tell my friend whose mom is in the hospital right now. I said, Kevin, my friend, um, I said, you've got to make sure that you are the best advocate for her. Yeah. And when you told me about posting up all those pictures in the hospital room, I needed to tell you that I will never forget that because that made the whole, the, all the difference in the world. Save my life. Yeah. Um, what would you tell other people who are facing that same situation or a similar situation where they have a loved one in a hospital bed who can't advocate for themselves? Yeah, I just, um, the advocacy is, is a, I think there's a gap in advocacy and patient advocacy and, and having someone there by the bedside, talking to the doctors, uh, giving them hope and, and uh, it's, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, for the patient to have somebody there advocating for him. You are an incredible advocate, and I know <laughs> she owes everything to you. Um, any final thoughts? Um, just remember to breathe deep and feel blessed. Um, it's not lost on me that if it weren't for my donors um, that I would have missed a lot. And I just, every moment counts. Yeah. Should we do a yoga pose here yeah, to wrap right, things up? Right. Okay. Um, Eagle is pretty no, much all. Eagle. I can do. Okay. All right. Girl, that's all yeah, I can let's... do in these heels and this dress. <laughs> okay. She so, is. Well, you ready? Okay. okay. I'm, I'm, I'll just hold on to him. For you my hold balance. on to him. You <laughs> hold on to him. I'll hold on to my breath. Right. And Kyle. And breathe. It's so. It's so bad that uh, you know Greg's not here today. I would have made him do this with. I'm impressed. Too. Are you sitting down? No. Look at that. <laughs> Balancing. Wow. I'm gonna. Hold I'm a trained professional. But Kyle, you it. can try this if you want. Here, here, what are the benefits? Where here I am think, our shoulders? thinking yeah. you guys are reenacting the Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do camel pose where it's all about opening. That's crane pose. Yeah. Oh, open the heart. <laughs> opening Twist the heart. heart. We'll, we'll just keep yoga-ing while Kyle's doing the weather. Child's pose. That's about all, all I'm doing. Yes, that's always good. <laughs>